My family has a strong tradition of embracing the great outdoors, particularly during the balmy summer months. Well, to be precise, my dad is the one who fervently champions the camping cause. As I've grown to the ripe age of 16, my recollections harken back to those earlier years when my parents went their separate ways. During the academic semesters, I resided with my mom. But as soon as summer break rolled around, I decamped to my dad's side. These were the seasons when our shared love for camping came alive, and they represented our very own petite summer vacations. Our camping journeys predominantly consisted of tent-based escapades, and it was quite common for us to be ensconced in locales where mobile phone reception was but a dream. Yet, paradoxically, we reveled in this disconnect from the digital world. It was a golden opportunity for my dad and me to cement our bond and relish each other's company. Our camping sojourns always commenced with meticulous research to unearth fresh, uncharted sites. We were resolute in our avoidance of revisiting the same place twice, except for one notable exception. A few years prior, we stumbled upon a hidden gem of a campsite boasting a pristine lake and a mesmerizing beach. Regrettably, I cannot quite recall its rather tongue-twisting name. Nevertheless, since the serendipitous discovery, it became an annual tradition to revisit this hallowed ground at least once a year. It remained a well-kept secret, evading the public eye's discerning gaze. Still, despite its secrecy, we invariably crossed paths with a motley crew of fellow campers, primarily families with children or teenagers. Gradually, it had earned a reputation as an informal family vacation spot, accentuated by the presence of modest amenities like small restroom and shower facilities, a rather surprising find in the heart of wilderness. A crucial detail I must mention is that just a few days prior to one of our camping sojourns to this cherished location, my dad took the plunge and adopted two spirited German Shepherd dogs. Their arrival in our lives was so recent that my dad had not yet christened them with names. Nevertheless, it seemed only natural that we would include them in our upcoming adventure. These dogs were remarkably well-trained, and their affinity for my dad was evident from the get-go. So, on the particular occasion that etched itself into our memories, it was my dad, his faithful canine companions, and me. Departure time was delayed beyond our customary schedule, causing us to arrive at the campsite well after the sun had bid its daily adieu. Setting up a tent in the inky blackness of night presented a formidable challenge, a trial well known to those who have dared to attempt it. As we stumbled about in the darkness, the unexpected arrival of another vehicle disrupted our solitude. While we hadn't anticipated encountering anyone at this hour, my dad ventured a guess that it might be park security. He continued with the task of erecting our tent, although I found it puzzling that such a remote campsite would warrant security. However, as the figure from the car alighted and flicked on a flashlight, my dad whispered urgently that we should extinguish our own light and hunker down. Unfortunately, our actions were too slow, for the figure had already discerned our presence and was advancing towards us. To our dismay, it was not a solitary wanderer but a trio of grown men, each brandishing an intimidatingly large knife. My dad, now clutching a camping mallet behind his back, made an attempt to convey our intention to leave peacefully, but it seemed to irk the men, who continued to draw nearer. I vividly recall the trembling sense of fear that coursed through my veins. It felt as though these men were spoiling for a fight, and I had no doubt that my dad, facing off against three armed adversaries, was in an untenable position. It was then that I remembered our loyal canine companions. Hastily, I flung open the car door, and both dogs bounded forth, charging headlong at the menacing intruders. It was all it took to send the assailants scurrying into the enveloping darkness of the forest, albeit not without a few well-aimed nips from our faithful protectors. With haste, we gathered our belongings and sought refuge in the safety of our car, both of us profoundly shaken by the unnerving encounter. The dogs appeared unscathed, a small consolation amidst the chaos that had unfolded. As we pondered our next course of action, it became clear that booking a hotel was not a viable option, as most did not welcome canine companions. 
Eventually, we resigned ourselves to embarking on the journey back home. During the drive, my dad reached out to the non-emergency police line to report the harrowing incident. Strangely, when we disclosed our location, we received a shocking revelation. The park we had ventured into had been shuttered for months, owing to an ongoing murder investigation. This revelation shed light on the eerie desolation we had encountered. Oddly enough, there were no signs or indications notifying visitors of the park's closure. The police diligently recorded our descriptions of the three menacing figures, though the accuracy was understandably compromised by the cloak of darkness and the swiftness of the encounter. The officer informed us that they might reach out in the future, as one of our descriptions appeared to match a suspect connected to the ongoing murder investigation. To date, however, we have received no such follow-up communication. This incident took place in 2019 during our annual summer family vacation. Each year, we embarked on a week-long adventure to a different location. That particular year, we decided to explore Daytona Beach in Florida. As a 17-year-old and an only child, it was just me and my parents on this trip, though we did have some extended family members joining us. Unfortunately, due to our late hotel bookings, we couldn't secure rooms close to each other. While we had planned activities together, for the most part, we were on our own as a family. On the first day of our trip, we were exhausted from the journey. So we spent most of it napping and lounging around in our hotel room. As night fell, my parents suggested we take a stroll on the beach before heading to bed. I wasn't initially enthused, but given my interest in photography, I decided to accompany them. While they took a walk, I planned to capture some captivating ocean shots. This went on for roughly 30 minutes. My parents had ventured quite far down the beach by then. Feeling tired, I decided to return to the room by myself. As I entered, I debated whether to lock the door, but ultimately decided against it since I held the room key. If I fell asleep before my parents returned, I thought it would save me the trouble of getting up to open the door for them. I must have dozed off seconds after my head touched the pillow. However, I was abruptly awakened hours later by my mom's urgent whisper calling my name. Our room had two beds, with my parents' bed closer to the door and mine further inside the room. My mom's voice pierced the silence once more, this time filled with greater concern. Groggily, I rolled over and asked what she needed. As my eyes adjusted to the dim moonlight filtering through the curtains, I saw her turn to look at me, her expression one of shock. We both turned to where she had been gazing moments earlier, only to discover a hooded figure, dressed entirely in black, standing over their bed. I was petrified. I tried to scream, but no sound escaped my throat. My mom nudged my dad, who was still asleep at this point, and whispered urgently to him. Meanwhile, the figure continued to loom over them. Finally, my dad awoke, and everything unfolded in a blur. The intruder bolted outside, closely pursued by my dad. My mom was now shrieking in terror. I attempted to follow my dad, but lost sight of him before reaching the hotel exit. My mom promptly called the police, and my dad returned shortly after, having been outpaced by the intruder. It turned out that a couple of other guests at the hotel had experienced a similar unsettling encounter that night. Even one of the staff members reported seeing a man trying multiple room doors to check if they were locked. We concluded that this intruder must have entered our room somewhere between my arrival and my parents' return. It made sense. I had left the room unlocked for my parents, and I was fast asleep on my bed. The figure must have concealed themselves somewhere inside, which explained why they went unnoticed when my parents returned. We provided our statement to the police, but to this day, we remain unaware of the final outcome of the investigation. Needless to say, this harrowing experience left us on edge for the remainder of our vacation. About two years ago, my friend and I, both 16 at the time, were on vacation in a small national park in California. It was technically my friend's family vacation, but we were close enough that they invited me along. It was just an extended weekend trip, so I didn't feel like I was intruding on a lengthy, expensive vacation. 
We stayed in a hotel on a moderately busy street in a somewhat touristy area. One evening, being typical teenagers, we pleaded with my friend's parents to let us go play mini golf on our own. The previous night, I had noticed a mini golf course nearby on Snapchat's map, so I suggested we check it out. We thought it would be the perfect way to spend the evening, especially since it was only about four blocks away from our hotel. After some convincing, my friend's parents agreed, as long as we returned before dark. Upon arriving at the mini golf course, we quickly realized that it was in terrible condition and appeared to be abandoned. Overgrown bushes and flooded holes greeted us. Oddly, I didn't see this as a negative. In fact, I thought we might not have to pay to play. We noticed another group of teenagers playing in the distance and saw some clubs and golf balls lying around. So we decided to start our game. The first half of our game passed without any noteworthy incidents. However, we became aware of a man in his mid-twenties or early thirties who was following us around the course. The other group of teenagers had left by this point, leaving just my friend and me alone with this stranger. Upon closer inspection, I noticed that the guy was wearing what appeared to be a work uniform for the place. It dawned on us that maybe the place wasn't abandoned, and perhaps we were supposed to pay. We assumed he was coming to kick us off the course, but to our surprise, he just lingered nearby, wherever we were. Finally, the man approached us and asked our ages. He explained that he needed to verify that we were young enough to play for free. We reluctantly told him our ages, though looking back, I regret doing so. His response was nonchalant, and he continued to pester us with questions about where we were from, what grade we were in, and who we were with, delving into personal territory. We didn't engage much in the conversation and exchanged worried glances, both realizing that the situation was getting uncomfortable. Perhaps he sensed our discomfort as he eventually left us alone. We finished our game, and by then, it was getting quite dark. As we exited the mini golf course, I noticed a sign that read closed for the summer, which made me realize that the guy we had spoken to couldn't have been an employee. He had been impersonating one. My friend stopped me as we were leaving, and to our dismay, we saw the man again, this time with four other men sitting on a park bench near the exit. We froze for a moment, unsure of what to do, but one of the men noticed us and pointed in our direction. All of them abruptly got up and began sprinting toward us. We knew they were blocking our exit, so we had no choice but to run back into the mini golf course and climb a fence to reach the sidewalk leading to our hotel. All while I yelled, run. We ran back into the course, scaled the fence, and sprinted the four blocks back to our hotel. We never looked back once. Realistically, neither of us knew if the men had followed us, but nothing else happened that night. We caught our breath in the hotel lobby and both silently agreed not to tell anyone about the incident, especially not my friend's parents, as we knew they would likely restrict our activities for the rest of the trip. To this day, the thought of those men's intentions that night still makes my stomach churn.